Mike Vick. <laughs> well, I mean, my God. It's, there's pick the a, Falcons. a heavy I mean, burden a when you're the prognosticator of you prognosticators. I did pick against the Falcons. It hurts. Too. It's heavy. Put it down. Hey, let's get back to our top story. Packers, Cardinals, and Aaron Rodgers had to do it without his top three wideouts. Proved again last night. He can be pretty much anything he wants at this point. Shot two touchdowns to his BFF, Randall Cobb. But did you see the way this game ended? Check it out. Packers up three, 15 ticks, second and goal. Cardinals going for the win. Kyler Murray getting picked off in the end zone by Rasul Douglas. A.J. Green's like, wait, that, wait, that was the play? Packers win. They get to 7-1. and one. They jump straight into the driver's seat now in the NFC. An elated and relieved Aaron Rodgers after the game. Without our defensive coordinator, without yep. MBS, the best receiver in the league, Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, our do-it-all guy, to have these guys come out and play the way they did, I'm so proud of them, so proud of the line. And to watch our defense finish off the game like that on the road against a great football team, that's what it's all about. It's going to be a great freaking ride back to Green Bay. We're going to celebrate this, have a great weekend, and get back uh, after it next week. Rodgers is happy about that. He's probably happy about this. The updated numbers now for Rodgers when Devontae Adams is out. Well, not really happy about this, but he is 7-0. 19 touchdowns, just one pick. What do you make of that? I don't know. Our quarterback, Mike Vick, joining us to break this down. Vick, what does it say about Rodgers that he was able to take down the undefeated Cardinals without his top three wide receivers? It says a lot about Aaron Rodgers and just the state of his game right now, I think he's truly in a place where he's understanding the game of football even more than he did in the previous years. Truly a football savant. And when you can take guys off the practice squad and go out and on the big stage and allow those guys to shine, and it's not just because you know of their talent, because they're young guys who are still learning the game, but in a week's time, put them in position where they can succeed, go out and, and have uh, you know remarkable games and be a focal point in the game, it's just not an easy thing to do. Just an average quarterback can't do that. And Aaron Rodgers continues to show that he's one of the top five quarterbacks in the game. He's still uh, one of the best around. And I actually enjoy watching that. But as much as I want to put the spotlight on Aaron Rodgers, because he was an integral part of the game last night, it's really a collective effort by everybody. Like he just named uh, so many guys who was out you know, from the defensive coordinator to Devontae Adams, and they still was able to find a way to pull that game out. It was just an exceptional performance by everybody. They got lucky in the end because that pass to Kyler Murray yeah, would have well, been a touchdown uh, if A.J. Green would have looked back. It was a perfect throw. But the football guards was on their side last night. Aaron Rodgers got it done without Devontae Adams and the defensive coordinator. And the Green Bay Packers look good and showed that they are the best team in the NFC right now. And I want to ask you a question about the end in just a moment. And they got lucky at the very end. They got kind of unlucky a few minutes prior when they had the touchdown overturned, when I thought that might have actually been a touchdown. I thought it was a very close overturn. That would have put them up 10, and then it doesn't matter. To On Rodgers quickly, I thought his post-game press conference was as good as his game. Because there, when you have the offseason that he had, Mike, I think it's very important that all year long throughout the year, you send out reminders. My beef was not with you guys. It was with them. Right. And the you guys is my teammates, and the them is management. And so every time he says, it's a small thing, but you would think Devontae Adams' first name when Aaron Rodgers is talking is the best wide receiver in football, Devontae Adams. He only calls yeah. him that. He always calls him that. To you know, point out that how much they were missing their guys and the other guys step up, I think is important for a team that obviously has Super Bowl aspirations. But now let's talk about that final play. I Clearly, A.J. Green thought the play had been checked to a run. That's the only explanation here here's my question yeah. for you how could he think it was a run he has to know there's 15 seconds left we have no timeouts like even if wouldn't you expect even if he thought he heard run to be like this can't be I, I must have heard wrong because we can't run the ball here I'm not trying to kill AJ Green but how yeah. does in your experience how does a mistake like that happen from not a rookie, not a guy up off the practice squad, a, a veteran, you know, a former all-pro receiver. How does it happen? 
No, nah, that's strictly on A.J. Green. When he break the huddle, especially in the red zone in a critical time like that, you have to know what the play call is because that's the difference between winning and losing. And it, it didn't go their way because of miscommunication. And it looked like everybody was on the same page except A.J. Green. And, you know, whether the crowd was loud or emotions was running high, that's your responsibility to run the right route. And uh, I can see why Kyler Murray was frustrated. I never seen that happen. I can't even think back to a situation where that happened to me, where we was in the red zone and I called a pass play and a guy thought it was a run play, whether Deshaun Jackson or Roddy White. That never happened to us before. So this was just a simple miscommunication on behalf of A.J. Green. And uh, he's going to be kicking himself in the butt for that for a long time, especially throughout the duration of this season. I agree with you, Mike. The Arizona should have won that game. Even though Green Bay was terrific from the game plan to the execution, everything. But Arizona should have won that game because, as you said, that last play call. And Kyler Murray to lead them on that drive, even when he didn't have a great game, I, I thought was very impressive. Uh, so they, I I'm yeah. not down on them for losing because I knew they weren't going 17-0. So I thought a loss was was coming up at some point soon. But here's what I want to ask you, Mike. Last year, we know the Cardinals were rolling, and then Kyler Murray has the shoulder injury. And now I believe they're 13-4, and four, including last night, with Kyler healthy over the last two seasons. But now we saw last night he got the ankle injury. Are you concerned now? Because I've heard people throughout this season say that they think he's injury prone, they're concerned about it. I thought it was a little unfair because it was just, you know, he's early in his career, he had one injury, but now the ankle is bothering him. He said it's not a big deal. But how concerned are you about him staying healthy? He may play, but if he's not able to be 100%, they could really go on a downswing here. Yeah, I'm very concerned, Chris, because y you can be hurt, and still can play, but that doesn't mean that you're going to give it uh, 100%, not even 90. And I think at the quarterback position and playing the way Kyler plays, I think everything falls along the lines of him being at 100% and being able to go out and execute at an all-time high, whether it's with his arm or with his legs and, you know, ankle injury, MCL, anything to the lower extremities, you know, it's going to take away from what you do best. And you know, as a mobile quarterback, we go into games knowing, all right, we can beat you in two ways. You know, we can be on with our arm or, you know, we can we can get you on the ground. And if you take away that element, sometimes it take away our confidence. And I think, you know, it's unfair to say he's injury prone, but when you play the style of play that he plays, you're going to get injured. You're going to get nicked up and knocked around. And uh, he got to find ways to combat that. He got to spend more time in the training room. But it's only going to get worse as the season goes on, and that's just about the nature of the position and the way he play. Mm. All right, Cardinals lose. Big win for the Packers, though, but they got a gimme next week. They're at the Chiefs, so that should be a nice a nice other win they're going to rack up. Let's stay in the NFC, talk some Bucks Saints. Can Jameis <laughs> Winston pull up?